Pool Perfect Max from Natural Chemistry is the premier weekly maintenance product for all pools. This 3-in-1 technology enhances clarity, maximizes pool program efficiency, and prevents problems. Take every pool care program to the max with Pool Perfect Max. Whether training a new employee or enhancing your own knowledge, Natural Chemistry offers a comprehensive online training program that covers everything from basic water chemistry to maximizing efficiency and troubleshooting. Visit www.ncprotraining.com today. It's, it's a lot like my the in, the in my brain, how I have my computer set up. It's a crazy place. <laughs> it's a scary place then. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Talking Pools podcast. I'm Rudy Stankwitz, and I am here with my co-host, Miss Andrea Nanini. I am Andrea, not a bird. So How have I'm you been? What have you been up to, Andrea? Well, I, I'm dialing in this route that I took over for this person, you know, trying to get things fixed back up. And it's been a lot of work. But I have had people come out and tell me like, oh, I, I've noticed the pool looks so much better these last couple of weeks. Yes, thank you. That's that's me. Well, there you go. So, that's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. Cool. How about you? Anything crazy? Not really. No, you know, just running through the gamut, chugging along, getting ready for the next chunk of my spine to be replaced. To be honest with you, we're getting some more titanium. I think it's pretty mm. cool. By the end of the year, I should be fairly similar to Wolverine. That's what I'm shooting oh. for. I'm hoping that I get those skills in this one. Didn't happen in the last one. But isn't the metal that he's that's the metal is called something crazy, isn't it? I don't I'm not big on like comic books. It's called something silly. Anyway, are you going to have this? Are you going to have it shoot out of your back? A big sword that comes out of your spine and then you can like, you know, attack people backwards. Yeah, that's the right. goal. I'm going to run backwards <laughs> at people, take them out, wipe them all out. You could <laughs> do like a backflip, you know, you could. Or maybe not. Hey, <laughs> we have a guest with us today. We do have a guest. Who is it? Our guest is Mr. Terry Arco, and he's with Hasa. So welcome, Terry. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks, Andrea. And thanks, Rudy. Glad to be um, here. Terry, for many, many years. Yep. He is a known entity in the pool industry. Yeah, there, that's, what they, that's what they tell me, a known entity. A known <laughs> entity. If there was a Mount Rushmore of people in the industry, Terry's face would be oh, somewhere on my. the back of it, maybe. I don't know. I feel sorry for whoever uh, would carve that, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Terry's with us. We could carve your faces into tabs. How about yeah, that? Yeah, there we go. All right. <laughs> Ter Terry's with Hassa, and we got a lot of news going on there. There's been a lot of news about Hassa for about the last, what is this, 2023? 20, so for about the last three years, Hassa has been a fairly exciting place. And I have to tell you, and I told this to Terry once before, probably the, the whack where we had this conversation, it, they caught a lot of crap during the pandemic. They did. My honest opinion is, no matter what anybody thinks about anything, they got a lot of attention because they communicated well with everyone. Prices going up, plastic shortage, no labor, no trucks. They were very sure to make sure everybody knew what was going on and communicated every price increase that was coming as soon as they knew about it. And because of that, you became a target. You got all the love. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty true. Um, also, you know, throw on top of that, in the midst of all that, one of our main suppliers, chloralkali, uh, you know, liquid chlorine depends on chloralkali industry in a big way. Uh, and one of our major chloralkali suppliers, um, they blew a transformer and uh, shut down for. I think that's what really did you in because that, I know. Well, yeah, <laughs> I know going into I mean, chemically, yes, but I know going into that year, I was getting some attention because I said Pulmageddon. Everybody thought that was cool. And I know you guys were like, look, we are not going to run out of liquid chlorine. We're not going to do it. It's going to be here. We're going to have it. We're going to have it. And all of a sudden, guess what? Yep. I was going on podcasts saying yeah. it and we were putting up posts and, and, and it was true. I mean, things were tight, but we were, we looked and we were like, yeah, we're good. We're, we're not going to run out of liquid. We're going to make it until <laughs> that one fateful, day, uh, the, the week before the 4th of July of all things, uh, we get it. this, we get this, uh, you know, force majeure notice 
from our main supplier, one of our main suppliers, the biggest supplier for us, really. I mean, we have others, but um, yeah, that they're down. They they can't provide. And that just, you know. What I mean, was, was the atmosphere in the offices like before <laughs> you put that information out to your customers? I mean, that must have just been a, a tremendous, oh, shit, uh, moment. Well, yeah, as you could imagine. And uh, as I said, that's not the only supplier um, that there is, but that was for Hasa and for many uh, municipalities on the West Coast and so forth, um, a, a really huge supplier. Uh, so there was a lot of scramble. You know, there was a lot of go to other places, but the problem there was uh, everybody else was scrambling too. And uh, it was like, get in line. And uh, when you consider also that, you know, the EPA is going to get involved in this and the EPA is going to say, you know, human safety and drinking water is going to come before before everything else. So now you really get it in line, you know, like, oh, well, you know, pools. Yeah. You know, okay. Pools are maybe important, but they're not as important as drinking water. So uh, you're going to take, you know, a, a little uh, uh, back of the line in comparison to that. And we had to do that. And that meant, um, you know, uh, that meant basically having to, uh, you know, ha have shortages. It meant, um, you know, having to sort of consolidate what we did and who we delivered to and how much we delivered to the, our distributors. And uh, that that was a hard that was a hard time. So. How challenging was it to ration those supply? I mean, was did you send to some distributors and not to others? Did we try to no. send everybody the same amount? Was it based on sales percent? I mean, how did we ration that? What no, that have. was that was the idea. The idea was, you know, we did not want to play favorites with anybody. We wanted everyone, every distributor, every whoever we dealt with who was a customer of Hasa, we wanted them all to at least get some rather than, you know, uh, you know, somebody gets some, but then somebody else doesn't. Um, so we rationed it out so that every one of our customers got, they got, they got liquid, they got supply, but it may not have been what the amount they wanted. Um, and I mean, that was just, that was the way it was. We gave now, everybody a little and that's how it went. Now so. I know there are a lot of people that feel like, felt like, still feel like that Hassa screwed them over during that time. How are those relationships have going now? Are they on the um, repair? Are they on the mend, or, or where are we at? They're 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 beyond the repair and the mend. Uh, and I think I'll I'll tell you that um, what you stated in the beginning there is because you know we could have and and I'll tell you there was other shortages related to um, chlorine and chlorine shortages uh, overall, um, even supplies, uh, even things like PVC pipe, uh, you know, all sorts of things, um, equipment. Uh, those sorts of things. So this was all going on. It wasn't just Hassan. It wasn't just the liquid chlorine. It just was exasperated by what had happened. What we kind of heard was, and we maybe even got some advice like, you know, uh, don't do anything, you know, just uh, go into hiding, you know, go dark. Don't, don't do anything. And a lot of companies were doing that. that they time, did. Really. A lot of manufacturers, we didn't hear yeah. a peep from. Right. And we could have done that. And, and and believe me, that kind of was on the table, that sort of decision of, you know, well, maybe we shouldn't. What, what do we do? What are... And uh, our CEO, Chris Brink, um, it's a great guy, you know, and he said, no, no, we're, we're, we're facing this head on. And we're going to get out there. We're going to get in front of it. We're going to just tell people everything we can about what's going on and what we're doing and uh, as much as possible. Uh, the main thing I think was really that, because I'll tell you, man, uh, I didn't want to open my computer up in the morning during that time. Because I don't blame of, you. Of the, the, you know, just what we were taking on social media, uh, deserved or undeserved or whatever it was, it was pretty brutal. Um, and, but, you know, credit uh, our CEO, Chris Brink, again, you know, he said, regardless, because there were people who said, well, you know, just, just turn it off. Don't pay any attention to it. Just, you know, be silent. And he said, no, we're going to address it. And the main thing that we wanted to address was to say, you know, hey, yeah, we know this hurts. You know, it's hurting us too. I mean, I don't know if you realize, but it is hurting us. We know it's hurting you. The main thing here is what we want to tell you is we hear you. We're listening to you, you know, and so we're going to address it. 
we're going to listen to your complaints. We're going to listen to all the things you have to say. And, and then we're going to address those things in a manner or a way that uh, I think allows you to kind of see that, you know, uh, we're not just ignoring you. We're not just sloughing you off. Uh, you know, we, we understand your concerns. We understand what's going on. And so, you know, we're going to get out and we're going to speak to it. Uh, and we're going to do everything we can to help during this time. And I think we did that in a really good way, in a positive way. Uh, and I've because not, we did that in a I've positive way. I've heard much in a little while. So it's been a yeah. while since I've seen you guys up in the crosshairs. There was a trade show season that hit right after that time. And of course, then then it's like we even had to make the decisions of showing up. Do we want to be there? Do we <laughs> do we want to see these people face to face? And what, you know, and it was almost kind of like you're thinking, uh, you know, it's the end of Frankenstein and here come the villagers with the torches and the pitchforks. Just to give you an example, uh, so the, the first, one of the first early trade shows after we had, were kind of still dealing with the damage of this um, was the one in Monterey, the PIE show. Okay. And uh, first day I get there. And I mean, I had just barely got there. And I'm checking into my hotel and I get in an elevator and the, this guy walks on the elevator. And of course, I've got a shirt on that says Hassa. So I guess I'm really a target, you know. And the guy looks at me and goes, hey, so are you guys going to have any chlorine this year? And that was the first thing. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, you know, he kind of threw me back, you know, and I said, well, that's the plan, <laughs> you know. Um, but to answer your question, um, yeah, we I think we've gotten over that hump in a big way so um on that on that same line i know everywhere every type of chlorine every chemical the pricing has gone up yeah do you foresee any relief on the pricing in the future um you know that that that's a that's a really difficult question to answer and it's because uh we're living in a really funky world right now you know i mean that's all i can say uh, and I personally, between you and me, I mean, I can't trust the world at all anymore. If I, even if I did at any time, it's hard to trust what's going to happen. Um, and I think anybody, uh, that's aware and has any sense of awareness can look around and see that, you know, uh, that things are just, you know, they're crazy right now. Supply is yeah. crazy and, 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 uh, you know, inflation and, um, and just, just all that. So, um, I can tell you we have no plans at this point uh, to do a price increase. Um, the price increases that- What about the other the, other way? What about that I, way, again, the other direction? Again, it's a, it, that, that's another one where I don't have a crystal ball or, or you know, I'm not prophetic in any way since or form. I, I think that if there was any possibility that that could happen, um, it would probably be considered or looked at. Again, I mean, the way things are now, I don't see that. And I don't see that happening anywhere with anybody in the world. I mean, our listeners, you know, are pretty good at putting things together. And everybody yeah. saw Biolab Factory burns to the ground. We know yeah. all of the weight of satisfying all of those customers went on the liquid and Cal Hypo markets. So yeah. everybody had to assume a lot more. But guess what? Incredible there's demand. a factory now. Yes. Right. So there's yes. a factory now. So yes. it would lead people to think, okay, there might be some decline in price on the horizon. Now, I've never seen pricing go down in the industry, but I've also never seen pricing go up like it has in the past three years either. Sure. And I think one of my, I guess, initial responses to uh, if somebody, you know, you saying that to me, or if anyone was to say that to me about you know, well, now we have the new plant, you know, that's okay. But here's something to consider is what was the cost of that new plant? Um, and not only that, what is, what are they having to pay? Who knows uh, to EPA or the, the whatever, you know, uh, that is probably more than maybe uh, when the old facility was there, what they had to do. Uh, so, you know, I think it's not as simple as, you know, hey, you had this manufacturing plant that was 60% of the supply um, and boom, they burnt to the ground. Now they're back. So it's going to be business as usual. I mean, I think that's kind of. Back in the day, they'd build a bridge, they'd put a toll booth on it and they told everybody in the community, you know what, it's just to pay <laughs> for the bridge. But you know what? Those toll booths yeah. never went away. 
Yeah, that's like the that's, um, that's correct. Like income tax paying for the war, or like uh, FPL's hurricane tax. I'm not sure if that ever went away. Well, you're still going to have hurricanes, right? So, well, I mean, they it wasn't a thing until Francis and Jean hit, and yeah. then it was like, oh, well, you know, and then that was just a thing that never went away. So, since we're talking about chemicals, um, what? So now that Arenda is is part of Hassa, um, what benefits do you see as a result? So we, me and Rudy were wondering, like, how is the, um, you're kind <laughs> yeah. of in disagreement about the chemicals and, and stuff like that. So how we were talking about how we thought you were going to reconcile that. Yeah. Um, good questions. Both you have, I think yeah, you have I very, think... a very different belief system. Haas is more old school traditional chemical values or renders traditionally been outside the box, let's say. So are we going to reel outside. them in or are we going to let cool. them survive as a separate entity? Are we going to pull them over into the hassle way? What's going on? People want to know. Yeah. So I think uh, let's address the, uh, the benefits. I think that was the first question that was, that was asked. And uh, I think really for um, Hassa overall, because Primarily, we're Hassa's big thing is juice. You know, we're providing liquid. We're providing muriatic acid uh, overall. Um, it's mainly what I use. We've <laughs> good. <laughs> we we've tried to um, you know, and through the years, and and uh, going back in Hassa's history, um, they've they've tried to delve into specialty chemicals uh, and so forth, and and. There was a sort of, I guess you could call it a Hassa specialty chemical line that was developed. A lot of people don't even really know about it uh, because it was something almost really that was more created uh, so that you could pack out a, a, a trailer, um, you know, and so you weren't shipping half a trailer of just liquid, but you could pack it out with some other things and it, you know, you got a little bit of something out of it or whatever. Uh, but we really... That was not what we were good at. Um, but, you know, um, there's certain specialty chemicals like enzymes. I think enzymes are are good. Um, certain types of clarifiers. And, um, you know, my history in the pool business goes to, I, I had 24 years of my life was at C-Clear. Uh, they made Kytosan clarifier, which I'm going to just say is probably the best form of a clarifier you could use in a pool. For many reasons, and I'm not biased, but I believe that. So, um, you know, uh, and and that's something uh, that was in the Arenda line, um, you know, and actually their supplier was the original Kaidasan supplier. So it's uh, it's a good product. So I think that there was, you know, Arenda has has really got, come a long way in building themselves as a brand. Um, and despite what anybody thinks about. Uh, the chemistry or, or that philosophy, I don't think you could argue that, you know, they've got good solid products. They've got a good solid line. They've certainly built that brand and built their name uh, over the years to where um, they have an incredible following um, of pool techs and pool pros and commercial users um, of that product. So I would say that is initially what drove us to, and, you know, I, I mean, let's be transparent and honest. I mean, we acquired Arenda, but I'm, we were looking at other companies obviously too. Um, but Arenda seemed to be the one that we really felt from the standpoint of branding. Um, you mentioned NSF. I mean, okay, let's talk NSF. They have that NSF, you know, on all their products and uh, they built a good quality product. The other thing too, I'll say is I think that um, they do a really good job of communicating um, to the pro. And again, whether we agree with maybe the philosophy or the education of what they're teaching, uh, they're doing a very good job and they, they, they have huge response um, from that standpoint, which we don't do well at Hassa. Uh, we really don't don't do that well. And so I use that, the app pretty much daily. So yeah, yeah, yes. Um, and so that was a big part of, I think, kind of on the benefit side that that drove us to that, uh, obviously. So now let's talk about 
um, the education and the chemistry. And I think what you said, Rudy, about, you know, Asa is a little more, I guess, I hate using the word old school, but that's what people <laughs> say. Um, cause you I realize share I'm, the same belief system that I have that <laughs> yes. tried and true. And yeah. here comes this, just let the pH do its own thing. Right. Where are we at? Right. right. Well, um, so first of all, uh, the biggest concern I had going into this, um, with, uh, some of the, uh, philosophy of Arenda and so forth. And of course, um, you know, Arinda has, and they've done it well, um, but it's it's uh, LSI, and it's LSI first, range chemistry second, and um, they've developed a lot of things behind that and a lot of technique behind that. And some of it, I think, is beneficial and, and good. Um, where the, the only place where I had a problem was that if you were going to say, okay, LSI first, range chemistry second, and if you were going to take your LSI and say, okay, um, I've got my LSI lined up, but let's just say that in getting your LSI lined up, your pH happens to be eight um, or your total alkalinity is, you know, 60 or something or, or below. In other words, you're, you're not in standards, uh, but your LSI is lining up which is possible. You could do that. Um, and then to instruct or say, you know, yeah, so as long as your LSI lines up, but your chemistry or, or one of your values is off as far as standards go, well, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, and so that's where I had concerns. And I don't know how much that was really happening. And I don't, I don't even want to speak to that, but I do want to say that that was a concern. So my main concern and it's because I'm a person who serves on the PHTA <laughs> Recreational Water Air Quality Committee. And I'm also, by the way, on the Standards Review Committee. So I'm reviewing PHTA standards and, and we're going through every publication because we merged with NSPF. So now there's a bunch of other you know stuff we have to get on the same page there from that standpoint. Um, and I've taught basic water chemistry uh, basically uh, along the same lines as Bob Lowry teaching basic water chemistry. And it was always according to range chemistry and it was always according to standards. Um, and we could go off way more on that on just liability and everything else, but let's just keep it at standards. Uh, and you asked about, okay, so what are we going to do? Are we going to let them go with the way they go? And are we mm -hmm. going to keep going? Are we going? And I'm going to say, yeah, right now we are. Okay. Um, but but with the caveat that, you know, um, we're going to teach standards on either side. So uh, we're going to be really careful about saying, you know, hey, if your LSI is good, but your pH is eight, well, okay, the max is seven, eight. So we're going to work with that. Um, and we don't, we don't want to get, you know, uh, anything kind of going off on, on that from that standpoint. The other thing that I will say is... Um, and we've had a lot of conversations on this. Um, I, I don't think that we're all that different in a sense. And here's why. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm teaching the PCTI, the Bob Lowry course. I was going to bring that up. Yep. And, Bob. Um, and we teach range chemistry in that. And I've taught range chemistry in all anything I've taught in, in all my teaching for, for 30 years. Um, and really, if you think about that, and I know for sure in what I teach with Bob Lowry, that's all operational chemistry. It's basically, uh, this is for, you have a pool that's up, it's running, it's in temperatures that are swimmable, <laughs> you know, so uh, 75 to, you know, whatever, 85, 90 degrees. It's, it's being maintained, it's being treated on a weekly, you know, twice weekly, whatever basis. And this is a system that's designed to maintain and control that pool. Um, and I think anybody could agree with that. Uh, and what when we talked about what Arinda's doing with the LSI, and if you look at 
the Arenda Academy, some of these things, whatever. Uh, a lot of it has to do with startup. A lot of it has to do with starting up a pool. A lot of it is based on, they talk a lot about temperature and a lot about what your calcium is going to do at certain temperatures. And that gets into kind of winterizing what the pool is going to do over the year. And then you're going to be starting it back up and those kinds of things. And I, and again, I'm going to say, and I've looked at a lot of their material uh, and I feel like from that standpoint, they have some good points to offer. And so what we've talked about, as I said, look, what, what I teach, I'm teaching operational chemistry. You guys, what you're teaching, you're teaching kind of more winterizing and starting up from the spring and temperatures of the water and, and where that's going and, and making sure the LSI is good from that standpoint. And so I think that's more the differences than anything else. And there's some other things like this the, about the CYA and the, um, you know, the Henry's law and the pH roof and stuff. But again, we're addressing those. We're addressing those. So, okay. I have a list of reasons. I don't like the pH higher. I've discussed them before, so I'm not going to go through sure. the gamut now. That's not what this is about. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's not what this is about, but we can compare notes right. afterwards. But well, you- when I use the app, I start with the pH and I put it, you know, because on the left side, you no, I'm interrupting you. I'm interrupting you on the left side, on the left side, <laughs> this on the is left not side, uncommon. you have what your chemistry is. And then on the right side, you input, you know, what you want it to be. Sure. And then that's where I start. So I always will start with putting it at 7.4 because I'm with you guys. Like, I don't like, you know, I try to keep it at 7.4. It's never mm-hmm. yeah. usually that when I show up to the pool and then I got to fix that. But, you know, I that's where I start. I'll do 7.4, 7.6, and then I'll go through the rest of the numbers in the app to get a balanced LSI and then get to where I f- feel like the chlorine's going to be effective and all these other things. So, Well, Rudy, you're a CPO instructor. I'm a CPO instructor. Uh, and, you know, I we teach LSI in the CPO. And I, and, and I just know one of the big things when I teach the LSI in the CPO and there's adjustments. Usually, the first adjustment is always pH. Correct. Um, overall, um, so uh, yeah. So Andrea, that's uh, that's a good thing. Yeah. I I agree. I have everybody bring everything to the ideal range: total yeah. alkalinity, calcium hardness, pH, and it usually gets you there. Rudy and Andrea will be right back with more Flock at Fridays after these messages. <laughs> Aquastar's new pipeline cartridge filters, available in two sizes, deliver top-notch hydraulic efficiency along with best-in-class filtration performance, approaching that of DE filters. Uniquely designed open pleat spacing means 100% of the media square footage is usable, and these claims are backed by NSF test results. Designed with a pro's time and comfort in mind, the patented double locking system improves safety and ease of access, making filter cleanings faster than ever before. Available now. Ask your supplier for pipeline filters today. Blu-ray XL is the power of minerals working for you. Reduce your overall chemical costs and labor up to 50% guaranteed. Whether you have 20 accounts or 20,000, Blu-ray XL's direct pricing and free shipping to the pool trade have you covered. Improving pool professionals' profit and work-life balance is what they do. Blu-ray XL, the real mineral purifier. Visit them at blu-rayxl.com. Blu-ray all day. Pool Magazine is the hottest new publication for the pool and spa industry. Featuring up-to-the-minute news on what's happening in the pool world in a fresh new stylized format with our mobile-friendly app. Pool Magazine is the app for keeping your fingers on the pulse of the pool industry. You'll find featured news, editorials, podcasts, videos, and more on the Pool Magazine app. Download on Google Play and the App Store. You mentioned teaching Bob Lowry's class. Yes. Can you go a little bit deeper into that for us? 
because he was yeah. a friend of mine. He was a friend of yours. He was my mentor for many, many years. But there is this class that he has. And sadly, Bob has, has passed. But you right. guys, you're teaching that. You're you're rolling out forward with that. I know you taught it with him, but you're continuing to do so. Share. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, so uh, same here. I mean, uh, I met Bob like, you know, I don't know, probably almost, I hate to say 40 years ago, that sounds really <laughs> terrible. Um, but it probably was. And, uh, you know, when I met Bob, uh, you know, I was, a, I was a pool guy. I was a lost pool guy. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And it was really hard to get a lot of information back then, um, you know, unless somebody at the counter or you had somebody that was going to, you know, uh, and usually it was manufacturers reps and you didn't always know if that was correct. So, um, but I met Bob at, I walked into a class, took a class of his basic water chemistry at the Western Pool and Spa Show, uh, which at the time was in Pasadena, California. So that's how far back that goes. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, uh, after that, it was like 35 plus years of friendship with him and, uh, just learning from him. And that helped me tremendously, uh, in my, uh, career. Um, so Bob, uh, you know, I think everybody kind of knows the legend of Bob and the pool industry and so forth, but, I want to say about 10 years ago, um, and he met up with a guy named Greg Garrett, uh, who also sadly has passed away. Um, and Greg uh, taught primarily startup. Uh, another chemistry. another industry. Great. For sure. Yes. Yes. Uh, for NPC, National Plasters Council. So the two of them got together and they just they formed a friendship as well. They started talking and in their talking, they were they were pretty much, uh, I guess, downtrodden that there didn't really, you had CPO and CPO was primarily for a commercial operators or commercial operators and aquatic facility operators, that kind of thing. But they kind of felt like CPO and most pool guys, gals that were even doing residential mm -hmm. were encouraged, you know, take the CPO, take the CPO. But in a lot of cases for a, somebody who's just doing residential pools, CPO is way beyond them <laughs> or even even material that they even needed to have and bob and greg both uh they talked a lot about this and they like they 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 came to this conclusion like you know there's really not anything that's specifically for a residential sort of backyard pool pro with an operational pool who needs to know and have the best way to maintain and operate that water chemistry so that uh, the, the pool is, is consistent week in and week out. Um, they're, they're able to use less chemicals. Uh, you know, they're, they're able to maybe uh, save in their cost and so forth. Um, and just really have a really simple uh, strategic way to keep those pools good week in and week out. And, and there's not anything that really hones in on that. And of course, you know, Bob's background with just basic water chemistry and with pool pros and, and Bob really had an affinity for the backyard pool pro. I mean, hell, the guy went to work for almost three months for a pool company uh, for no charge. So don't pay me. I just want to ride along with your guys and I want to see what they're dealing with day in and day out, you know? Um, and that's the kind of guy that that he was. And so they developed, um, Bob and Greg together, they developed what was known as the Pool Chemistry Training Institute. That was in 2018. Um, Bob developed a book around that. It's a 258-page book called uh, Pool Chemistry for Residential Pools. Uh, he also, just before that, had written a, a small little 26-page book, which is called Pool, Chemist, uh, Pool Chemistry for Service Pros. Uh, which is sort of the synopsis of the big book. Um, and they launched that uh, with the idea that this is going to be a one-day course, like six, seven-hour course. Uh, and we're going to give an exam, just like they do in CPO, um, of what you've learned. And you pass the exam and you get a certificate, you get a patch. Um, you know, we provide you with ongoing information and education and so forth through text sheets and things like that. Um, and so they launched that in 2018. They started going out, teaching it live. Uh, they were doing it at trade shows. The things were going along well. Um, but, you know, uh, Bob had a, uh, a health issue 
uh, even at that time, he was diagnosed with a what was called a fatal lung disease. Uh, at the time he was diagnosed, which I think was uh, like 2016, maybe something like that. Um, they told him basically he had two years, if that. Um, oh. And so every day was just what it was. Every day was a gift. Um, and uh, and he knew that. But I mean, man, you know, the dude was a Green Beret, so he was tough as hell. You know, and he didn't let shit like that stop him. So he kept going and uh, was teaching these classes. But, you know, he realized what was going on. And he had his wife, Sylvia, who's just a beautiful person. And, um, you know, him and I started talking more and more. And I loved the course. I attended the course. I went through it. I thought, well, this is great. You know, it wasn't perfect. It had some things where it needed improvement. And I talked and shared that with Bob. Um, and as we talked more and more, you know, he began to say, you know, I'm Obviously, he knew I'm not going to be here forever. Uh, I have a wife I'm concerned about. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at probably selling this off at some point. So when he said that, uh, and I was with Hassa, and I think I had just gotten hired with Hassa only about a year or so in. Uh, and, uh, you know, I said, I mean, I went to the folks at Hassa and said, look, if you want a great education program, this is it. Um, so let's work out. And, and we did. Uh, so we worked out a deal. And it's interesting that kind of right in the time that all that was happening, uh, as it turns out, sadly, uh, Greg Garrett died very suddenly. Um, and Greg Garrett was the U.S. office of Pool Chemistry Training Institute. Uh, he was pretty much all the administration and so forth of that uh, at that time because Bob was in Peru. Uh, he lived, his wife was Peruvian and they, he, he lived in Peru. Uh, well, so when Greg passed, that all went away. Uh, that just, it, it was gone. And uh, so Bob was pretty much left just to himself and trying to operate this thing from Peru and keep it going. And um, so that's when Hasa got involved and we partnered with him really is what we did in the beginning. You know, everybody thinks we just kind of, you know, took it from him or bought it from him, you know, to make money and all that. And that's totally not true. That I've not heard. Yeah. Some people say that. Um, and uh, it's wrong uh, because that's not what we did whatsoever at all. And in fact, the deal and the partnership was really uh, more so for us to keep it going, to keep his legacy going um, and, and to be able to, um, uh, after Bob passed, uh, to uh, make sure that uh, Sylvia had um, some income coming in from, you know, what we the deals that we worked out with Bob. So uh, that's kind of been the way it's gone. So I've taken it from there, and um, it's it's been a bit of a struggle, uh, you know, because there's a lot to it. Um, but uh, we're keeping it going. Um, and we have some plans to actually um, make it more virtual, make it more accessible even than it is now to a broader number of pool pros and pool techs because we realize that, uh, A, number one, uh, not everybody can get to a live destination or not everybody's not at trade shows. Um, we do online courses, um, but sometimes not everybody can take a Saturday off or whatever. Um, so what we're uh, looking at moving ahead is making it available as kind of a, a, a virtual course as well. That So somebody could, like with CPO, like the fusion um, course with CPO. So that's kind of the next phase that we're uh, going towards. And uh, But I will say um, it's been very successful. We've had great classes. We've had some great online classes. Uh, I think since since... Bob has passed. Um, we've had about almost 300 uh, texts that have gone through and gotten certified. Uh, when Bob is, first came out with that program, he had talked to me about teaching the course. Of course, he yes. sent me over the slides to look at. And unfortunately, between AFO, CPO, and then some <laughs> other things I had going on, I just sure. didn't have room in my schedule for it. But I did look through it and it looked to be a great program. Let me ask you this, because it kind of ties in. You, so you picked up that asset. Did you pick up all of the Bob Lowry assets? Um, no, not 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 all. Um, we uh, basically 
what we mainly picked up was all PCTI assets, the okay. publications, the slides, the course, the uh, the name, the um, you know, all the certificates and patches and all the artwork and all those things, um, copyrights and all that. Um, along with that, we did get um, because Bob wrote, um, well, several IPSA manuals. That's where I was heading. Um, and um, so we do have uh, copyrights to uh, basic training chemical manual of IPSA, the intermediate manual, the Spanish versions of those. Okay. Um, he also had a, um, a book, which was the handbook on chlorination, um, which was, yeah, that was published it's earlier. A great book. Uh, it's a great book. And we, we have the, um, the copyrights to that. Um, Bob had a skill in taking extremely complex information and making it very easy for anyone to understand. And that, yeah. That is not something that everybody has. No, know. and that's that it, was his gift, and uh, and that was his. And I'll say that was his passion. Also, I think he realized that was his gift. I think he related to it. I think he related to just you know the um, grassroots techs, you know, and that's who he loved to interact with, and he loved being able to kind of take complicated chemistry and 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 figuring out ways that he could make that uh, usable, um, you know, not just to get up and, and and for people to go, wow, this guy's smart, but to be able to, they could sit in a class and then they could go the next day and they could put into practice what Bob had taught them and it would work. And that, I think he had a passion for that. That's really what he wanted to see happen. And I think that's in PCTI, um, the, the pool fantastic. chemistry training. Yeah. So Andrea and I have this theory that every saltwater pool should have automation on it for feeding acid. So can I, this yes. can this thing feed acid? <laughs> See, because <laughs> you have this product, <laughs> you have this product, it's called the liquidator. I have the Barbie dream house size. That's what I yeah, have yeah, here. Yeah. And so yeah, that's the um, and that's actually we the, we had an older version which we called the liquidator. Uh, that that version that you have, that newer one, is we call that the Hasa Liquid Feeder. Uh, acronym is the HLF because we think that's it a does cool say acronym. that on it. If I actually yeah. turned it around and read before <laughs> yeah. I opened my yeah, mouth, it's the have HLF. That, but, um, you know. And so I'm going to tell you real briefly about the idea that's behind that is that product there. Uh, it's not real sophisticated and it wasn't designed to be all that sophisticated. It really was designed to be a um, liquid version of a tab, uh, an inline tab feeder. Uh, and if you were to look at the video or read the directions on installation, you would see that it's basically like installing a tab feeder. There's no electricity, anything like that involved with that unit. It works uh, completely off the hydraulics of the system. Um, so it's got a, um, uh, you know, the the end part of that, which is going to, which comes off of the return. Um, and then the outflow goes to the suction side, um, just like a tab feeder. And I have and a dial where I'm controlling the water. Flow and you've got a unit. flow, a little simple flow control. Okay. Um, and so it's got water in it from the pool system, and then you add liquid to that, uh, and then those mix uh, in, you know, in the unit itself. And it's slowly, you know, depending on how you put that flow or whatever, it goes out uh, and feeds liquid kind of on a as need basis. Um, and, and that was the idea behind that. It wasn't to, be, to try to make something really automated or sophisticated. It was more so. You know, well, because because the biggest thing you're going to find and Andrea, you know, maybe you deal with this because you said you do liquid and you're in Florida. Yeah. So I don't know if you use jerry jugs that you fill up from the big gasoline I do. container. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I think you would say or, or kind of know that it's a it's a little bit of a, um, uh, let's say labor intensive to haul liquid into somebody's backyard all the time when you have to put it in. It's not. Mm -hmm that simple of a thing, or it's not like, you know, bringing tabs in and throwing them into a feeder. It's a little more. Right. And, and, and I know where I did pools in Southern Cal, 
you know, we didn't have the jerry jugs and all that. We had the Hossa cases with the gallons in them. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, the other thing is, uh, with, you know, is liquid going to make it through the week, this kind of thing, you know, well, maybe we need to leave some behind. Um, and so there was all those kinds of things where it, it's a little bit, um, you know, clunky. Uh, let's just use that word. And so we were trying to make it less clunky uh, by saying, you know, well, hey, here's a, a little unit you can install and it takes 20 minutes to install. It doesn't use any electricity. It works like a liquid tab feeder and you can have liquid feeding in there on a daily basis if need be. So now you're not having to haul it around so much. You're not having to leave it and, and depend on the customer to put a gallon in on Wednesday you know, or whatever. So that was the thought behind that. You know, it wasn't a lot of real engineering overall. Well, sophisticated I'm actually really not. interested that in that. Hold on, I have a couple of questions. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> Louise. <laughs> no, because I'm thinking in my head, trolled, like, is there a, you said there's no electricity or anything. So does it just continuously? It, so so it, it only chlorine? works, it only works when the system, when the system's on, uh, when the gotcha. pump and everything. So it's working off of the hydraulics of that system. Oh, so I as see, I said, okay. Yeah, so you're drawing um, uh, into the you're drawing water into the unit from the return line, either ahead or behind the filter on there, and you you hook it into there just like you would like a tab feeder, you know, where you'll okay. drill and tap, you know, and you've got a little uh, fitting that goes into that, and then tubing comes off of that, um, and then there's tubing that comes out of it, and it'll typically go in front of the pump. Or, or we have it set up. If you want, you can actually put it into the pump pot if you want. Um, okay. So before before anybody freaks out about that, about, oh, chemical <laughs> going into the pump, it's diluted. It's diluted chemical. And usually or typically at the dosing that we have set up for, it, um, it's about three to five ppm going in to the front of the pump of chlorine that's diluted with water. So, no, um, so it's like normal so pool water. It's like normal there, pool then. water. And I mean, yeah, you consider if you shock a pool, you can have 10 to 20 ppm in the pool that's going in th and then, but that's the but but that's diluted that's diluted so that's where you have to kind of sometimes people go oh you know you're putting chemical in to, no we're not we're putting basically pool water pool treated water into the pump so it's funny that pump. you bring that up because um one of my last pools today and i did this to myself and i wanted to kick myself in my own butt I because I forgot I was going to do this. So this morning, part of the reason I got up so early, I went to this big, big pool that I have. Rudy and I have talked about 175,000 gallons and it's set up like a commercial pool. So it's got a vac DE filter and it's Whoa. got chlorine tanks. Um, Well, it's got chemical tanks, excuse me, and Stenner pumps. So I actually just had to go lug like six to eight jugs uh, and the Jerry jugs where I am there two and a half gallons. So I had to park, you know, my truck and then walk all the way. I don't even know how far it was. It felt like a mile, you know, walk the jugs back to the tank, fill it up. But this seems like it would. Well, be a, you know, a saver I, maybe. I, <laughs> for that pool, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know that it's that a would big be, pool. Yeah. I don't think it would be the best candidate for this. This is really designed for, I would say, maximum 60,000 gallon pool. Okay. Um, and really, you're kind of just basic backyard pool. I mean, that pool you're describing to me, if it was going to be on liquid, I'd say it might be worth it to just, you know, have a controller and, a, you know, um, like peristaltic uh, pump going into a drum. Yeah, that's like that. that's what I have right now on yeah. there and the chlorine's um, just going And it there, wouldn't so. replace that in any way, shape or form. It's more for your kind of just average backyard pool um, and you don't want to be using tabs uh, right. and you definitely want to use liquid, but you want a way to, you know, not have to be sort of hauling it back and forth or, or thinking, well, is it going to make it through the week what I put in? Uh, and you don't want to depend on the customer to put that, sort of middle of the week dose in in the in there i don't know but that why. sounds like a, i like the i like the concept i like it yeah well i'd be more than happy to, to get you one to try so oh cool let's, thanks i don't know let's, why you don't get yeah. deliveries get just liquid delivered to that pool um at, at one hundred and seventy five thousand you know, gallons you're down in south florida you're gonna go through liquid i just don't see why. What do you mean? Like, like have the jugs dropped off or do you mean have a, no, have a truck, truck come out? Um, I like a, don't... like a bulk or a mini bulk. Yeah. Kind of thing. 
Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, it's an I it's on an island, so, so I don't know. Oh, they don't let trucks on the island. It's it's Jupiter Island. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, so, I, it's I'm not saying no. I'm Florida. just saying I'm I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Can we put muriatic acid in this? <laughs> no. You, uh, no, no. Just bleach. No. Okay. Liquid yeah. chlorine. Only sodium hypochlorite. Okay. Got it. Um, Done. Yeah. So. <laughs> perfect. Now, you guys, I there's so much to talk about, Terry. You guys supplied Jamie Foxx with chlorine jugs so he could go out and kill vampires. How the hell does <laughs> that's that happen? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so I, that's a that's a really interesting story because and and, and again, I only been, had been with Hassa maybe a year when that first. Um, and so I get a call transferred from the main office, and they're like, you know, hey, uh, there's this guy that wants to get a bunch of empty cases from us, but like we don't know what's going on. So can you call? So I call this guy, you know. And uh, he, you know, he says, yeah, I'm a, I work for a props department in Hollywood. So that's what he starts off with, you know, and he says, um, and uh, we, we want to know if we can get like empty bottles, those yellow, you know, with the white and then those orange ones that have the red, like those, whatever those are, we, we need to get a bunch of those. And can you send them to this address in Georgia, blah, 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 you know? So, you know, I mean, you got to be concerned about everything these days. You can't really trust anybody. You don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, well, well, yeah, it, what do you want those for? You know? And he goes, oh, we're going to use them in a movie, you know? So I go, oh, okay, well, but then I start thinking, well, what kind of movie? Because, you know, we don't want Hassa. <laughs> you know, I mean, we, we don't want to be in any kind of. Uh, no porn. You know, Bad, yeah. You know, like, and there's there's Hassa in the background, right? You know, uh, that that wouldn't send a good message. You know, so I'm like, you know, look, I need to ask you a little more, like, before I can do this. You know, so then the guy, the guy broke, and he goes, "Look, I I work with Netflix, uh, in their prop department, and he goes, we're doing a movie right now, and they're doing a movie about a guy who's a pool guy, but he's also <laughs> a vampire killer." Okay, so then I went, "Woo!" I was like, uh... "All right." I'm liking this. So I said, tell me more, you know? And he's like, well, yeah. So, and, and uh, so, so that the really funny and interesting thing was, is he said, well, you know, because they were in Southern Cal doing some of it. And then they did filming in Georgia. They were all around, but, but they, but the, the main director of this movie was in Southern Cal and they got this truck, the truck that you see in the movie, which is really a cool truck. And they had the truck all decked out with, pool service stuff, you know, the pole, the vacuum, buckets of tabs and, you know, everything is all decked out. And so they, they bring it to the director and the director goes, Hey, where's those yellow and like red cases, those plastic things that I see in all those pool service guy, like my pool service guy has them in his truck. Where are those? Those need to be in there. It doesn't look like a real pool truck if those aren't in there. So I thought that was kind of cool. That's funny. <laughs> oh, that we're we're kind of that iconic, at least. In yeah. So you places. knew about you knew about the movie way ahead of time, obviously. It, yeah. Did and, you uh, have to? But I didn't know who was going to be in. Did you? Did anything? you ask for a screening? A pre of. I did screen. offer. I said, "Hey, look, uh, I'm I'm a pool guy. If you guys need somebody to give you technical uh, advice uh, on site, uh, I'm more than willing to do that." You know, and they kind of said, "Yeah, no, we don't really need any help." So last year. Speaking of California, last year, something came to legislation that came up about a trichlor tax. Yeah, a tax on stabilized chlorine tablets in order to gain money for training to be used to educate the public on the challenges of using trichlor. And we this was later discovered that and correct me if I'm wrong, that Hasso was supporting this in some way. What, yes. What's going on? This has also been lovingly called the Hasa tax. So <laughs> help me out here. Well, what, what's up tax. with this? It, it was actually uh, in the mind of a, uh, a senator, Senator Ben Allen, I believe, um, who happens to live in the, the same district where um, our CEO lives. So it, it's... I mean, you know, if you look at Hassa's webpage and you look at kind of how we promote ourselves, one of the things we promote is about the environment and we're very, really big on the environment and our uh, our deposit model with, you know, the Hassa Santa Claus and the plastic cases and the plastic bottles that get returned and then put back. 
Um, you know, we really are proud to say that that saves a lot going into the environment, saves tons of plastic from going into the environment or into the oceans. And um, our CEO is really a big advocate for the environment uh, overall in a lot of ways. Um, and at the time that this came into fruition, you got to understand California was in a major drought, um, major. And there were a lot of restrictions going into place and things like that. Um, and also the same time, we're beginning to learn more and more, more about um, cyanuric acid, uh, the effects of cyanuric acid, and, you know, the um, really primarily, if you look at uh, PHTA documents, if you look at the WAC, uh, you look at health departments, anything, what do they say about if you exceed the, you know, now it's, um, I think with, with the uh, model aquatic health code it's 90 now i believe but uh, pHTA it's still 100 um, in the state of california it's a maximum of 100 and so we, we pull a lot of those papers and they're saying you know if you exceed this uh you know uh, you need to drain some or all of the pool and all of the recommendations now are 30 to 50 um so a lot of this stuff that's being brought to light on the how that affects disinfection uh, and so forth that have come to light. And um, from our, uh, I would say, kind of upper management and leadership at HASA um, and being in California and seeing something to where you have consumers who are using uh, trichlor tablets or dichlor for that matter. And there is nothing on the labels of those products to tell them uh, that they are um, maybe unknowingly uh, contributing cyanuric acid levels to increase their pool to a place where it might be required uh, for them to drain the pool unnecessarily. So that was kind of the impetus of this thing going forward. And at the time, I think it was also felt uh, by, you know, uh, certain people or, or uh, some in the leadership that the industry wasn't really addressing this, uh, you know, completely uh, in that way, or that the consumer wasn't really getting informed uh, as to what they were really doing if they are going in and buying trichlor tabs and using them week in and week out. But you could um, see how, and of course, this was uh, this, and and just to clarify, this was only on tabs that were purchased retail, not wholesale. Correct retail. is the wording. Well, okay, so retail. so one there's a fear that once you open the door to that, of course, then the tax on commercial purchases, wholesale purchases, isn't far behind. Also, you can see how the big liquid chlorine manufacturer supporting this tax increase on trichlor tablets with money going to somebody to train the people. And of course, you know, that I have no idea who was going to do the training on the education of it, but people did suspect that it was going to come back to Hassa and that Hassa was going to do that training and that this whole thing seemed extremely self-serving. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that that was not the intention of it at all. Um, the intention more so was, um, uh, basically, uh, between the bill that came from Senator Ben Allen and uh, Haas's involvement with that was strictly from the standpoint at that point of water conservation um, and consumers being unaware of a certain product that they were using that could lead to, um, you know, uh, the uh, unintended uh, draining of pools or maybe where they wouldn't normally need to be drained as quickly or as often, they may need to be drained more often. And that would be a water waster at the time. Um, I can tell you also that, you know, there still was that intent in, I guess, the background of a way, uh, this was kind of sort of designed to be a little bit of a wake up call to the industry. And, um, and, and it was, and it is. And so I'll tell you just to bring you up to present date on it. Uh, first of all, the bill is, the bill is on hold. Um, it's, it, it's 
been placed on a one year hold before it's going to even do anything if, if we're, you know, it does anything at all at that point. Um, and the reason for that is that, um, you know, we reached out and the, the industry reached back uh, to us. Um, and uh, we had CPSA who contacted us, um, you know, California Pool Spa Association, obviously, and they're, you know, everyone was made aware of this, you know, ahead of time, we didn't try to hide anything, you know, we went to everybody and said, hey, this is, this is, this, here's this bill, and we're supporting it. Um, and one of the reasons we're supporting it is because we feel like the industry has to kind of step up and do a better job communicating, uh, particularly to the users, you know, and, and when I say users, I don't mean pool guys, because pool guys should know, we hope, <laughs> you know, but the end users, which would be the consumer, whether it's a consumer who's having a pool pro take care of their pool, who is using Tricolor tablets, and at some point it's going to come up to them and go, oh, by the way, uh, I tested your CYA and it's over 100, so I'm going to have to drain some of your pool. Okay, well, why? Well, because I use Tricolor tablets. Okay, well, those are chlorine tablets. What does that mean? Well, they put CYA. Okay, I don't know any of this. And the labels don't tell me. And so then, it, and if I'm a do it yourself or pool, consumer in California and I go into the store and I buy tricolor tabs and I look at the label, there's nothing on that label that tells me this is going to contribute cyanuric acid and, and tells me uh, the levels and the maximums, anything about that. So I can be totally unaware and somebody could come test my pool and say, oh, you need to drain your pool because it's over this or whatever. So that was the idea behind it. And then what happened as a result of that is we had meetings with CPSA, we had meetings with PHTA. Uh, and the decision came up that uh, there is a committee that's being put together. Uh, it's kind of being driven by CPSA and PhDA both, um, uh, which is going to put information together. And the idea is for this to be information that's going to go directly to consumers to educate them on um, the byproduct of trichlor and dichlor, which is CYA, but also educate them on other forms of chlorine and byproducts from other forms of chlorine and being aware of total dissolved solids and overall things that are going to lead to increase uh, in a need for draining. I would like to hear a poem about sodium hypochlorite. Oh, well, that's, uh. put, me on, that's put me on the spot. Yeah, like, um, okay. But I could say, you know, chlorine, chlorine, uh, elementally it's green. Um, it'll make like your it. pool look serene. So there you go. Beautiful. Um, See, I made that up job. on the spot. Thank you. <laughs> um, I like it. But uh, I don't know. I read, yeah, I I read his first book. There are no <laughs> poems about chlorine that I recall. <laughs> yeah, I try and get away from that when I'm writing. Poetry is to kind of uh, take me away from my normal kind of job. Uh, nah, I gotcha. Give me some peace and release, I guess. Yeah, for sure. And not yeah. looking at pools all day long. And, you know, you need something else to look at. So I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Really when not, is so. when is that date for the second one? What do you have in mind? Uh, okay. You know, uh, it's uh, hopefully going to be soon. Um, it's unfortunately I have a day job. So and as you know, I mean, man, you've written books and, and did that, which I applaud you greatly for even being able to to do that. Um, it's something because it's hard. Carve it's, out it's, the it's time. Really, it, yeah. It's really hard. Um, I, I have the material and I'm kind of ready to, to do it. It's just like, yeah, it's a matter of putting the time into it and, and kind of getting a cover design and and going. But it's it, it should be soon. Um, that first one I did, uh, I really did it on the fly. I was like sitting home one day and going through Amazon and the Amazon and publisher. And I'm like, oh, hey, I'm going to publish a book. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, and I had all these poems. And uh, so I was just like, okay, I'm start throwing it in there. And I did it and put it out. I think I was off on vacation for a couple of weeks and, and I did it. And I had no idea even kind of what, what it would do or whatever. Um, and uh, then, you know, I don't know, the industry kind of picked up on it. And now some people, you know, started promoting it. Um, I'm certainly not going to do rich. We're going to do now. Tell everybody that's the name cool. of the book. Yeah, I was just going to say, tell her the name. Uh, so the one that I have now that's on Amazon is called Out from the Dark House. <laughs> Out from the Dark House, Terry so, Arco, Amazon.com. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you want to see what's inside his mind. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's, it's a good stuff. book. I have it. Yeah. I have a copy. Yeah. Like I said, I am waiting the second one. So I, I appreciate look it. forward to that. Yeah. 
Well, I guess that's it. So thanks for listening to our show. And, um, you know, thanks for listening to all of our other shows. And you can find us on social. Email us at talkingpools at gmail.com. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, if you have questions, let us know. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. Listen yeah. to all the other shows. I think I said that. But Terry yeah. Arco, thank you for coming on yes. with us. We yes, greatly appreciate you. you. We we tossed out some hard questions. I it's just yeah. the name of the game. But sure. definitely a pleasure having you on with pleasure us. to be here. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you guys uh at the shows. Fantastic. Absolutely. I, I'm gonna so try to get everybody go to a thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Until I'm, next I'm not time. saying anything else. Bye. Be good. Go ahead, say it. What's your problem? Be safe. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>